Phyllis, how did your sons break it to you? They walked in the door and then they sat down for a little while and then they said, uh, we're going to join the clan. I nearly had a fit. <laughs> <laughs> Ku Klux Klan is America's most notorious white supremacist group, and this year marks the 150th anniversary. This is also a year that's seen escalating racial violence in the US. In this turbulent climate, the Ku Klux Klan claim they're on the rise, and they're trying to appeal to the younger generation. How old are you? Uh, I just turned 20 in March. I'm currently still in school. At its peak, the KKK had an estimated 5 million members. Thousands of African Americans were tortured and murdered by lynch mobs in the Ku Klux Klan. But Klan numbers declined in the 60s. Oh my Klan! I've gained rare access to spend seven months with the traditionalist American Knights who say they're the fastest growing KKK group in America. Some of their rituals remain unchanged. Very awesome. But they claim they've left violence behind. We haven't killed anybody. I haven't anyway. In this atmosphere of racial tension. Come on, KKK. You fuck around, you gonna get fucked around. Three members belonging to the clan I'm filming are arrested for planning to kill a black man. I've come here to find out just who belongs to the KKK and if it really is on the rise. <laughs> I'm by the banks of the Mississippi River in the state of Missouri. A local town called Ferguson has recently been the focus of the world's media. A black youth has just been killed by a white policeman which has led to widespread rioting. Racial tension is high, and the police seem unable to control the situation. The local Ku Klux Klan claim that some of the white population are turning to them. I'm getting a lot of feedback. A lot of people are real upset about what's going on, you know. Frank Ancona is the leader of the traditionalist American Knights, one of 20 KKK groups in the US. He claims his has the fastest growing membership and that their hotline is receiving over 100 calls a day. I am of the white race. We are subjected to criminal violence. Oh, it's nonstop. <laughs> After some negotiation, Frank's invited me to his house. He's been leading his clan for six years. By day, he's a delivery driver with a passion for heavy metal. I don't like, you know, I don't like rap music because to me it's not, it's not music. Frank's not entirely out of touch with modern culture. He's built a sophisticated website, which has been attracting attention since the Ferguson riots. You get many hits? Oh yeah, the volume is higher than it's ever been. And in the six years that I've been an Imperial Wizard, we've had as many as 50 to 100,000 hits in a day. Frank's website declares that the white race must keep itself pure and regain control of America from the inferior races. There's a reason that God made us separate races and the white race is a superior race. But there appears to be a contradiction in Frank's ideology. You know, we are not we, when we say we're not a hate group, it's true. We don't hate people of other races. We don't really hear our members preaching hatred toward other races. And most of us are in this for the fraternal brotherhood aspect of it for the most part. And then why didn't you and the history. have a bridge club or poker club? Because uh, somebody has to carry this on. <laughs> the history of the clan as a hate group is something that Frank is keen to shake off. Perhaps this clan sees my film as an ideal PR opportunity. We're not like the media tries to portray us, you know, we're not the evil monsters like, you know, they sometimes say on some of the documentaries. Everybody else can speak out for what they believe in, but when we do it, it's, you know, it's racist and if that's what they want to call it, so be it. Uh, to me, my race is my family, so sure, I'm going to look out for the interest of my family first. The clan's public image still draws hostility and Frank's bodyguards, the Nighthawks, are needed for protection. We really usually don't have much trouble, you know, we've been lucky, but 
We all are armed. All Nighthawks are supposed to be armed. I stay close to his lordship here. I mean, if there was trouble with the, the robe design, is that going to be a problem? No. I can get to it really quick. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> Frank's told me his group has over two and a half thousand members, and since the riots in Ferguson, he's been seeing lots more recruits. I want to see who these people are. I'm meeting one who's rising through the ranks, 29-year-old John, who lives with his wife Heather and their three children. The clan needs more security, and John's just been promoted to become one of the Nighthawks. His new handmade uniform has just been delivered. This one's mine here. Yep, just got just got made by Sister Linda in there. She made it. Little shardy here. Quality work. Oh, really, really good. So what does it stand for? The black. All the security guys wear the black ones yeah. only, only Nighthawk. Like whenever we're having meetings, I'll stand outside the door and make sure nobody comes in or goes yeah. out. Okay. The clan's robes are iconic. John's 27-year-old wife Heather is being measured up for hers. She joined two months ago. Have you had any reactions from your friends after joining? Um, not so far. No. no. Not so your far. Parents? Parents don't know. Oh. Yeah, parents don't know. I want to know why a young father like John joined a year ago. I've been on the housing list for six years. I got three white children, myself and my wife, and I work every single day. And I've been waiting for six years now to be assisted a little bit by the government, have a little help, nothing. Really Our country just ones. don't care about us Americans who built this country. Yeah. It's all about a handout to all the illegal immigrants. Doesn't the history of the Klan bother you, Heather? Um, what the past was? Like, you know, the Ku Klux Klan people, it's, you know, what they used to say about it, how horrible it was. And so, of course, I went by what society thought. And that's not at all it. Not even close. That's the way I was. Mm -hmm. That was exactly how I was. I was actually very hesitant yeah. at first. And I met everyone and experienced it all and realized how great everybody is. And it honestly has helped my marriage really? so yes we struggled we struggled a lot we had a lot of issues i gotta go into what issues they were but we had a lot of issues and now it's great i couldn't be happier heather and john's cozy family isn't what i expected of the clan but i'm not sure i'm seeing the complete picture Make sure we don't get it upside down now. Clan members are expected to help recruit others, and I'm meeting one clansman who likes to advertise in his own front yard. Rick, a retired police officer, is known as the Grand Clud. He's the clan equivalent of a Christian chaplain. Oh boy, here comes the school bus. Hello? Uh, White Power, how are you guys doing? Pretty good, how are you doing? How you doing? I just seen you guys here and I figured I wanted to help spread the message. Yeah. Well, um, would you take a picture please? You just press that button right there. Okay. I'm not gonna wear the hood because I'm telling you it's hot. And I don't care who knows who I am. No, I never use the right hand. That, that's Nazi, I don't like that. Uh oh. I don't know much about it, and I would like to learn more. I've always uh, uh, supported. Left hand. OK. Are you interested in becoming a member? I'm very well considering it. I would definitely like to know more about it and get to know it, you know? Let me give you one of my cards. It has a website where you can go to. We'll give you instructions on what you need to do. All right. Well, uh, goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Have a nice white day. Have a white day. You think this... he's a good candidate? We'll find out. But he's young, yeah. isn't he? He's young. Yeah, he's young. He may be dumb too. I don't know. No. But we'll find out.
I'm realizing how nervous the clan are about their public image. The young man's Nazi salute could have been a PR disaster. I told him don't do that yeah. because we're on television. Yeah. I would hope you, you would uh, edit that. With all these new members, I imagine a production line of clan tailors, but it's just Linda. She's married to Rick, the Grand Clud. He persuaded Linda to join three years ago and helps her make the traditional hoods. I was impressed with their ideals, what they wanted to do, and uh, I wanted to be a part of it, you know. Plus, you know, it, it, it made uh, Rick and I closer in our relationship. And um, I wasn't going to pass up on that, you know. She didn't want to be set sitting on the couch. Yeah, I didn't want to be left at home sitting by myself all the time. <laughs> okay, now um, we're going to get to the eyes here on this mask. Okay. That's the kind of thing you can't get wrong, isn't it, I suppose? That's why I let him do it. I don't know Because her he... hand shakes. This guy's got a little head. I've got the big head. <laughs> You've got to put a string in your eye. Right there. Uh, I'll have to cut it off. Okay. That better? That's a bit better. It's less less stringy anyway. That's better. I've been with the clan for two weeks, and I'm still trying to understand what they truly represent. I'm going to a secret location deep in the woods to find out more. Frank, their leader, has gathered his people for an important message about the escalating violence in Ferguson. We have a bunch of wild savages running the streets. It just angers me, and it should anger everybody. Because it's not only black savages, there's white savages out there, godless, lawless criminals. We're not going to be quiet. We're not going to start rioting until we get peace. Frank tells his clan they can defend themselves with lethal force. I'm finally seeing the other side of this clan. Big smile. I've spent a month with the Missouri chapter of the Ku Klux Klan, who are actively recruiting during this period of racial unrest in Ferguson. This clan, the traditionalist American Knights, claim to be the fastest growing in America. I want to find out if they really are on the rise and who joins an organization promoting white supremacy. Is it yeah. what you expected? It's actually been better than I expected. I, I believe in the cause and it's something I could relate to. They've given me surprising access to their secretive world. Tonight, I'm being allowed to see their infamous cross-burning ceremony. Clan members travel miles to see this event. How, how far did you come today to be here? Uh, it was about a, about a six-hour drive, about 400 miles. Wow. Mm -hmm. But it's worth it. We enjoy what we do. We're not bad like everybody thinks we are, you know. Do you have a partner? Is she, is she in the clan? She's not in, no. She yeah. agrees with what I do, but no, she doesn't, she doesn't have anything to do with it, you know. She's not clan material, I'll say. Really? Yeah. I'm still curious to know what draws people into the clan. Could a part of it be the rituals and grand titles? such as Exalted Cyclops, Imperial Dragon, and Grand Goblin. Frank, their leader, is about to announce he's won a new title. Greetings to all Hydras of Realms, Klegals of Domains, Grand Titans and Furies of Provinces, Giants, Exalted Cyclops, and Terrors of Cantons, and to all citizens of the Invisible Empire of the Ku Klux Klan. In the name of our valiant and venerated dead, I affectionately greet you. Klansmen, do we believe in our cause? Yes. yes. I see that the Klan enables people to escape their ordinary lives. Where else can a delivery driver like Frank transform himself into an imperial wizard? Or a landscape gardener like Jeff? become a Grand Dragon. Brother, now you are appointed Grand Dragon for the realm of Kentucky, <coughs> Tennessee. If 
I could have the acting Grand Dragon for the realm of Alabama come forward. I dub thee the Grand Dragon for the realm of Alabama. So what, what's this award for? For Grand Dragon. We're the, we're the state leaders now. I'm over Kentucky and he's over Alabama. Okay. And what, what, what can you do with that certificate? What does it mean? Well, it's just, it's just something we'll hang on our wall in our claverns. Just that way, frame it, you know, something to be proud of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've got two very proud members here. I expect them to go back and lead the men in their states that they, that they come from. I've actually got uh, four, four members, possibly five, that we're going to be naturalizing here next month. Oh, really? So, yeah, we're trying and we're doing it. I mean, we're growing every day. It takes time, but we are growing. Yeah, just stand. Can you always be depended on? Naturalization is the ceremony where new recruits are formally accepted into the clan. Once in, they'll need a made to measure hood and robe. Now the polyester satin is a lot easier yes. to work with. When I first started, I had a stand, standard width I put between the two eyes. Yes. And then people were calling up and said, they're too far apart, I can't see. Mm -hmm. Work goes on until dusk. I want to know why Head Taylor Linda is so devoted. There was something in my life that was missing, and when I joined the clan, I felt fulfilled. Can you put uh, your finger on what was missing? Uh, I guess in the past, I always felt insecure and inferior to other people, and this now I feel like I'm equal. Fifteen. Fifteen. Helping to measure up recruits is new member Heather. She's here to see her first cross-burning ceremony with her husband, John. Johnny, can you remember your first day, your first cross-burning? Oh, yeah, it was here. It was here? Yeah, it was here. What did it feel like to you? Oh, it was amazing. You can't even explain it until you witness it. it really? Was the best feeling in the world, yeah. Everybody around watching it, watching it all lit up. Can you remember the emotion? Can you put a finger on it? Kind of what sort of feelings? Kind of like tingling feeling just through my whole body. Just everybody was silenced, just watching the cross on fire. And yeah. And it was just, uh, can't even explain it in words, just tingling through all your whole body. Yeah. There's an air of expectancy and excitement with the cross burning ceremony drawing closer. It's time to get dressed up, but the polyester robes are highly flammable, so they get an all important health and safety briefing. Do not turn your back on the cross, ever. But you keep your arm out like this, keep the torch straight out, stay six feet apart from your next clan. If you've got a knot in your belt, undo it. In case you get in trouble, you can get that belt off, get that robe off as quick as possible, and someone will come to help you. Forward, march. Follow my lead. For my God. For my God. For my country! For my country! For my clan! For my clan! For my family! For my family! The burning of the cross lies at the heart of clan tradition. It's a ritual few outsiders are ever allowed to witness. I've been told that the fire symbolizes their faith in Christ, but it's also known for a more sinister reason. Throughout the clan's history, the burning cross was often used to terrorize African Americans and lit outside their homes as a death threat. Between 1877 and 1950, the KKK was part of a US network of white supremacists responsible for the murder of around 4,000 black men, women and children. raise us up once again to be that great nation. God bless America, and God bless the traditionalist American Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. So how was that for you, Heather? It was great, it was great, it was very spiritual. Mm -hmm. Very moving, yes. What were you thinking about when you looked at the cross? 
uh, my mind was blank. Let's get everybody just just here gazing here. at the cross. Everybody. Yes. Everybody that was pretty intense. Yeah, pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to do it again. <laughs> As the flames on the clan cross die out, the fires on the streets of Ferguson are raging. The police are struggling to control the unrest. A new media opportunity presents itself to Imperial Wizard Frank. He prepares a statement warning the rioters. Attention to the terrorists masquerading as peaceful protesters, you've awakened a sleeping giant. We will use lethal force as provided under Missouri law to defend ourselves. You have been warned by the Ku Klux Klan, this is what our remedy is under the law to defend ourselves. And then we put, uh, you know, for more information about setting up a, a neighborhood watch, and we put our phone number and website up. Frank's call to action needs to be packaged for delivery. How are you getting back here? Uh, it's real simple. We just, we take the flyers and we put them in a plastic bag but then we toss them in the driveways and they'll stay there all night and they'll go out and pick them up. Like, good morning, the clan's around. <laughs> Save their land and join the clan. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm all pumped up, ready, fired up, ready to uh, get these distributed out to the community and hopefully they uh, give us a call and do the right thing. The leaflet drop is carried out while the city sleeps. Should be a nice, successful night. We're hoping. Doors are open. All right, when we get up to here, Harley, you guys go ahead and hit them both simultaneously, left and right. Car, hold off. During the day, John works as a lumberjack, but I'm told he's also spent some time in prison. What were you doing before you joined the clan, John? Uh, not really much or nothing. Doing a lot of drinking, a lot of partying. Nothing successful. I had my kids and my wife, but I just really wasn't in the right frame of mind. And I didn't really have a sense of belonging until I joined the clan, and then that kind of changed everything around for me. Get out and do more things productive got stuff to look forward to other than going out and partying and throwing my life away. At least I can do something productive. Oh, shit. The next morning, the clan's leaflet drop is the talk of the town. Letters were tossed into driveways and lawns and baggies with rocks to weigh them down. Mark, when people here woke up on Monday morning, they were greeted with hundreds of flyers like this one bearing a disturbing message. The clan is awake. There's also a response from the streets of Ferguson. The KKK, the sad. They want to come up here with their bullshit. Come on, KKK. <laughs> come on. Please come on. We've been waiting on this. Come on. We're going we gonna to take you down in a joint, on the streets, whatever, because you know we run everything. You fuck around, you're going to get fucked around. I've been filming Imperial Wizard Frank, leader of the traditionalist American Knights, which claims to be the fastest growing KKK group in the US. He sent a warning to the rioters in Ferguson and has now received death threats. Come on, KKK. We're going we gonna to take you down in a joint, on the streets, whatever, because you know we run everything. He's heard there's even a bounty on his head, and I want to know what precautions he's taking. Oh, we've got security cameras so that we got a view of everything around the house. So you are a little bit concerned. Well, I didn't, well, this way we can record if anybody, uh, you know, because nobody's going to do anything while I'm here. But maybe if they don't think somebody's not here. But there's another threat. Frank's website is under cyber attack. KKK, it has came to our unfortunate attention that you have been interfering with anonymous. We are attacking you 
because of your threats to use lethal attacks against us at the Ferguson protests. You messed with our family and now we will mess with yours. Anything you upload will be taken down. Anything you use to promote the KKK will be shut down. Anonymous are an international activist group that have hacked major organizations, including the Church of Scientology and ISIS. Anonymous have attacked Frank's clan by hacking the Facebook accounts of members and publishing them online. Public exposure of their personal details has placed them in real danger. Ku Klux Klan, you should have expected us. Let the cyber war begin. Even Frank's bodyguards seem rattled. There's a degree of fear I've not seen before. Or it could be anywhere, you know. You could be on your job. It could be in the grocery store. They could follow you. Uh, just kind of have to be aware of your surroundings just all the time. So it's a genuine threat, do you think? I take everything as a genuine threat, you know. Since I'm head of security, I have to. I have to take it as a threat. It concerns our brothers and sisters. Some members are so scared, they've decided to quit the clan for good. What's sad about it is we lost some good members on account of their idle threats that, you know, it scared some people. It's because of their families. They're nothing but a bunch of scumbags. That's where I see them. And what, what did they do exactly? Well, they got in, they hacked our, uh, our uh, website, and uh, it was down. I mean, we, they, they shut us completely down, and uh, we had to uh, fix it to where they won't get in it no more. Sooner or later, they're, uh, they're all going to meet their fate. Some of those who've left were recent recruits. John and his wife Heather fear for their three children and have reluctantly hung up their hoods. Who are the people behind the anonymous mark? Well, I have no idea. That's why it's called anonymous. I'll, we never will know. We never will know. Do you have theory of who it might be? Yeah, possibly. Yeah, I possibly got theory, but it don't matter. It's, it's just a bunch of group of uh, anarchists. They're communists. Just like in China, just like in Russia, they're communists, anarchists. My, my children were even put on the internet. Were they? Yeah. Their face was scratched out with permanent marker, but if you know me, you know they were my children. Which is a scary, it's a scary thought. Yeah. Any, anybody that's gonna attack someone that has three children, to my opinion, is a piece of shit. There will be repercussions. I'm speaking for the white man and the white race. Our heritage, our next generation. We ain't got much longer to live, but this is the future of the white race. It's what we live for, our kids, our race, our generation. We may have some downfalls, but this has been a white man's country for 300 years. So why should somebody else come in and change it? Although death threats have scared many Ku Klux Klan members away, Grand Claude Rick refuses to be intimidated. I'm not here to harm people. I'm not going to let somebody come here and uh, harm me. It's part of my history, sir. It's part of my history. I, I'm not giving it up to anybody, and they're not going to erase it. Ricks told me that some of his relatives were members when the Klan was at its most popular in the 1920s. At that time, it's estimated that one in seven white Americans belonged to the KKK. Klan influence went right to the heart of the White House. It's rumored that a number of presidents were members. Rick's grandfather was a highly decorated Klansman. I don't share this with a lot of people. So that's from 1920? Yes. I'm fifth generation Klansman. Mm -hmm. How, how does that make you feel that, you know, your grandfather may, may have been involved in lynchings, right? Mm -hmm. I like it. Right. I like it. Why, why do you like it? <coughs> because it's, it's a part of my, my heritage. I mean... But what about uh, the 
What about the innocent lives that are lost? Oh, surely it bothers you a bit? Um, I didn't do it. It's just it's difficult for me to quantify because I, yeah. you know, I've, no, I've got to know you quite a bit. Yeah. And your outlook is not one of, of hate, you say. It's not. No, but then but being proud of your grandfather that may have lynched someone, is it odds with... I don't think he lynched anybody that I know of. Uh, you don't know half of what you think you know about us. It's true. There is a lot I don't understand about them. On the one hand, they claim to be a peaceful Christian group. On the other, some of them celebrate a murderous past. Even in recent times, there have been savage killings committed by Klansmen. One shocking murder took place in 1998. I've come to Jasper, Texas, where it happened. And a very good morning to you. This is the news for Thursday. Currently outside right now, we have 65 degrees in Jasper. Not much fog out there this morning, just a little bit of a mist, so drive carefully. The first report of the murder was broadcast on local radio. Well, a woman called in from the uh, uh, Huff Creek community and said, uh, please pray for everyone here in the Huff Creek community. Uh, uh, my neighbor found a man's head in her driveway. And that turned out later to be James Bird, the remains of his body. The reason why his murder shocked the world was the horrific way it was committed. This truck was used to drag James Bird Jr. to his death. He was chained by his feet and dragged for three miles along this road. One of the first on the scene was former Sheriff of Jasper, Billy Rouse. For every step I'm going, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, this ain't good, this ain't good. Now this right here, right here is when I started seeing the black mark in the road the dark colored spot in the road that was took off like these little lines in the road right there you can see. But can you imagine being drugged in the middle of this road all this way? And the doctor thinks he was still conscious because his elbows, the way the road ground the elbows down into the bone and where the bone wasn't even just mush on both elbows. And his tailbone, his tailbone, you can, they, you can see where he had tried to go this way and relieve, get a little, go this way, trying to shift his body weight around. Excruciating pain, my God, I can't imagine what he was going through. The Klan perpetrators and one accomplice dumped James's body outside a black church, knowing the parishioners would find it the next morning. I've come to Jasper's Lone Star Baptist Church. James Bird Jr. was part of this community and sang in the choir. The preacher here, Reverend Lyons, knew him well and led the funeral service. Can you remember the, the day that you had the news about James Bird? Yes, I remember vividly. It was on Sunday morning. We were all in Sunday school. The first news we heard was a young man had been dragged on the Huff Creek Road. It was a shock to all of us and especially to the family. and opening up not only the eyes of Jasper, but the eyes of the world, of what, what he can do. That man was dragged. What, what human being, I'm a human being, and you're a human being, 
How can we come to the point of dragging another human being to his death? James's murderers were hoping to start a race war, but were arrested the next day. John William King is on death row awaiting execution. Lawrence Russell Brewer was executed in 2011. The other accomplice, Sean Allen Berry, is serving a life sentence. Captain James Carter assisted the sheriff at the scene of the murder. He was a close friend of James Burr Jr. He took me to see his grave. That is it. You know, something you'll never forget, and that's one of them. See him one day walking down the road, and the next day you're going out on a crime scene. And never forget going to uh, trying to identify who it were. Long walk up to that doorstep to tell the parents that their beloved son was deceased. Horrible. Horrible. You just got to learn to stay positive yourself. When I've been with the clan recently, they tell me that they're men of peace and they're here to protect. How do you feel when you hear that? Terrible. Just terrible. I mean, hatred, hatred, hatred is, is, you see it right now that we live around it every day. And this what can happen at the blank of an eye if you go down the wrong path. It's been seven months since I started filming the traditionalist American Knights. They maintain they're the fastest growing KKK group in America. But their recruitment drive stalled when the hacker group Anonymous posted their secret membership list online. The exposure has been a PR disaster for their leader, Imperial Wizard Frank. I'm here to visit Frank, who's still promoting his group as a non-hate organization. I want to ask him where he really stands on white supremacy. Do you like Hendrix? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter that he's a black man. Nah. No. I didn't join because I hate black people. We are all human beings. We all have emotions and things like that, but I don't think that we're all exactly the same. I mean, I mean, even you all being from England, me being from the United States, we're we're different, you know. But the, no reason to dislike each other over. I mean, it's it's what makes things interesting, actually. Frank shows me a photo of a black friend. Me and Daryl, of course, don't agree a lot on a lot of things as far as the racial separation, but I think he understands that the traditionalist American Knights is not a group that's out to harm blacks or any other race. Right, but the Klan does have a history of violence, doesn't it, Frank? Oh, from, from past Klan groups, yes. But ran properly, it's not an organization that's about hate. <laughs> Ever since I started filming, Frank's insisted that his Klan is a non-hate group. But soon after I left him, a shocking news story broke. Three men belonging to Frank's clan have been arrested in Florida for conspiring to murder a black man. Three suspected KKK members are in jail tonight in Northeast Florida. These three corrections officers face charges for conspiracy to commit murder. We have team coverage on this elaborate plot to kill a former inmate. Catherine, wow. I want to find out what the Klan's reaction is to this news. I'm getting a lift to their national meeting at another secret location. I'm being led to see Frank. Surely these recent arrests challenge his vision of a peace-loving Klan. People see you as the face of this Klan, and if someone does something like that, then they wanna... it sort of makes a joke out of, you know, your, your preaching of a non-hate organization, doesn't it? That's what the, that's what they w would like to try to do. But this this sort of does, doesn't it? If you associate yourself with these people, it sort of does. I don't I don't think it does because that's not what we that's not what we teach. That's mm. not what that's not what we're about. I mean, have you heard anything here that would that would make someone leave here and want to go out and commit a criminal act? There's always going to be those people who are. 
they're going to believe what they want to believe and that facts can be right in front of them mm. and they're still not going to believe it you know it's just you have a slightly impossible task yeah i don't see it that way i believe with god all things are possible <laughs> this news must be a major blow to frank's pr campaign to distance his group from racial violence and hate. He's keen to reassure me and his members that this is just an isolated incident. I just want to thank everybody for being here. I love every one of you. I'm proud to serve with every one of you. I was asked a question about this situation in Florida. Every organization has bad people. Those, those bad people will be removed from our midst. That's what's going on here right now. Those who are not worthy are being cast out. The clan is dismissed until dusk. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last call for raffle tickets. Here's one, huh? Some lucky winner. I've met up with Rick, who's putting the finishing touches to a raffle prize. Now I'm going to put it over the uh, Barbie. She's backed by popular demand. But what about the arrests in Florida, Rick? <laughs> You can't make everybody responsible for uh, a couple, two or three people's actions. I, I mean, uh, but they were Klansmen, weren't they? They were, but uh, uh, you know, um, I don't know if I would have called them Klansmen if they were uh, practicing that. And I guarantee, you, if we would have knew anything about it, I would have stopped it. I would have stopped it. You would, yeah. Yes, I would have. I would have stopped it. Believe me, uh, that's not what it's all about here. Uh, people need to get their right perception of us, and uh, they don't need to uh, think that we're all bad, because uh, uh, I don't want nobody being harmed in this. People need to understand, this is not a black thing with me. This is not one of these things where everybody thinks that we get drunk on a Saturday night and get up in all our regalia and uh, go out and try to hang a few people in the trees. Uh, we haven't killed anybody. I haven't anyway. I have no intentions. So, I guh. guess so. It's just you know having the hangman's noose on your. Well, that's 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 a symbol. Because if you want to get past it, then it'd be better not to have those symbols, wouldn't it? Surely. <laughs> not really. It's just. It I just uh, I wouldn't say that. No. Wouldn't. no, I wouldn't say that. The clan seem to be taking things in their stride and carrying on as normal. What is a red mug rug? That's one of these. It's a, like a coaster for your coffee cup when you drink coffee in the morning. And the winner is five, six, seven, one, one, nine. Seven, one, one, nine? Okay. Nope, not me. This is prize number two. This is for the clan doll. Oh my goodness, I can't see. Five, six, seven, zero, seven, seven. Yay! Given the recent arrest of three members for conspiracy to murder, I wasn't expecting to see new recruits arriving. And what, what convinced you to do it? I've always agreed with the, um, the morals and the values that the clan um, associates with ever since I was growing up and I didn't see a reason not to. And so I need to ask, how old are you? Uh, I just turned 20 in March. Right. I'm currently still in school and that I feel should be a priority, but I do plan on helping whenever and wherever I can. And how did you hear about um, the TAK, this clan? My father is previously a member. Uh -huh. Currently. Okay. Currently a member. Are you, are you proud of her today then? I'm proud of her on a regular basis. It reassures me that if, if uh, I'm not around, that, that she'll be okay. What about those uh, three members in Florida that have just been arrested? What, what do you think about that? Uh, it is very disappointing, and there is always going to be good and black people of many, uh, good and b bad people, sorry, of many races. Um, so it didn't put you off? No. I followed this clan for seven months, trying to understand their belief in white supremacy. I think the thing that binds them together is fear. 
fear of everyone outside of themselves. I've seen the consequences of this ideology and it fails to recognize common humanity. The vision Frank presents appears benign, but I can't see how their underlying beliefs can lead to anything but more bloodshed. It's time for the South to rise again. It's time to take our country back, my friends. something I kind of goofed around with. <laughs>